The Tapajós Hydroelectric Complex Portuguese, Complexo Hidroeléctrico de Tapajós is a proposed complex of hydroelectric dams on the Tapajós and Jamanxime rivers in the state of Pará, Brazil. The Tapajós dams would contain locks, thus converting the river into a navigable waterway. A platform model is proposed under which all people and material would be moved by river or by helicopter, avoiding the need to build access roads and the consequent inflow of settlers and environmental damage. However, there have been protests against flooding of indigenous territory by the dams, and the largest dam seems unlikely to be approved. Dams and power plants The proposed Tapajós hydroelectric complex would impound sections of the Tapajós and Jamanxime rivers. The Tapajós River hydroelectric complex would have a total installed capacity of 10,682 MW. Elektronaut estimated that the project would deliver power equivalent to that provided by burning 30.5 million barrels of oil annually. The proposed dams being studied are São Luas do Tapajós would have guaranteed capacity of 4,012 MW from 38 Kaplan turbines. The dam on the Tapajós would be 7608 meters, 24961 feet long and 53 meters, 174 feet high and would impound a reservoir of 729 square kilometers, 281 square miles. There would be 17 locks, 19.6 meters, 64 feet wide and 20 meters, 66 feet high in the spillway. The Jatabar Dam, also on the Tapajós, would be upstream from São Luas do Tapajós. It would have 2,338 megawatts capacity, with 1,282 megawatts guaranteed from 40 bulb turbines. The dam would be 1,287 meters (4,222 feet) long and 35.5 meters (116 feet) high, impounding a reservoir of 646.3 square kilometers (249.5 square miles). The 40 meters (130 feet) spillway would have 14 locks, 18.9 meters (62 feet) wide and 20 meters (66 feet) high. The other three plants under study would be on the Jamanxime River. The complex may also include the Chacarau (3,336 megawatts) on the Upper Tapajós and the Jardim de Ouro (227 megawatts) on the Jamanxime. These have not yet been studied in detail. Topic: <inaudible> Waterway. The dams are part of a plan to convert the Tapajós into a waterway for barges to take soybeans from Mato Grosso to the Amazon River ports. A continuous chain of dams with locks would eliminate today's rapids and waterfalls. Legal and constitutional objections may be bypassed through security suspensions. The Chacarau locks are listed as a priority in the National Waterways Plan, Brazil, MT 2010, p. 22. The dam's reservoir would eliminate the Chacarau rapids, allowing barge traffic above the dam's locks. The controversial Chacarau Dam is rarely discussed in the context of the Tapajós Basin developments, despite its central role in the plan. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Platform model. The Tapajós projects are surrounded by conservation units with a total area of 200,000 square kilometers (77,000 square miles), including the Amazonia National Park and the Itaituba I, Itaituba II, and Jamanxime National Forests. 
With the traditional construction model access roads are built to the plant, settlements form along the roads and around the plant, and there is widespread damage to the environment. This risk of damage to the native forest causes opposition to the projects. The concept of building hydroelectric power plants in a similar way to offshore oil platforms was developed in 2004 05 planning sessions attended by Minister of the Environment Carlos Minc. With the platform model there would be minimal impact on the environment, with trees only cut down at the plant location, and the site later regenerated. All material and personnel would be transported by water or by helicopters. Transport costs will be higher but the need to build roads and other infrastructure will be avoided, so net costs may be lower. Impact The project would affect at least 32 communities and 2000 square kilometers, 770 square miles of indigenous territory, mostly occupied by people of the Mundurucu ethnic group. The Sao Luas do Tapajós dam would flood about 7% of the Sore Maibu indigenous territory and the Boa Fe village would have to be relocated. As of 2010 Electronaut had not applied for registration with the National Electricity Agency to start feasibility studies for the Chakarau plant, since it would flood parts of the Munduruku and Sai Sinza indigenous territories. A spokesman said that without a decree to regulate the constitution, there was no way to undertake projects in indigenous territories. On the Jamangsim River, the Jamangsim Dam would flood 8,516 hectares acres of the Jamangsim National Park. It would affect the South Amazon Ecotones Ecological Corridor. The Cachoeira do Cai Reservoir would flood 15,690 hectares acres of the Jamangsim National Park, 6,800 hectares acres of the Itaituba I National Forest and 20,470 hectares acres of the Itaituba II National Forest. The official estimate is that 150 people will be affected. The Cachoeira dos Patos Reservoir would flood 9,000 hectares acres of the Jamangsim National Park and 360 hectares acres of the Jamangsim National Forest. It would also affect the area around the Tapajos Environmental Protection Area and the South Amazon Ecotones Ecological Corridor. An analysis of the two Tapajos River plants published in 2014 concluded that forecasts of demand for electricity had been overstated, and plans did not take into account improvements in efficiency of energy use and the availability of new power sources such as solar and wind power. Taking into account the cost of the transmission system they concluded that the project was not cost effective even when excluding factors such as loss of fishing and tourism revenue, water quality degradation and carbon emissions. A study released in December 2015 took into account carbon and methane emissions from construction and from the Cachoeira do Cai and Cachoeira dos Patos reservoirs, and concluded that there was a high probability that the plant would generate emissions comparable to a natural gas plant. In the case of the Cachoeira do Quay there was a possibility that emissions could exceed those of a coal-fired plant. <laughs> Planning and approval process Inventory studies The first surveys of the hydroelectric potential of the Tapajos River were made between 1986 and 1991, and the planning process resumed early in the 2000s. 
In 2009 Elektronaut, Carmago Correa and CNEC Engenharia undertook hydraulic inventory studies of the Tapajos and Jamanxime rivers, which were approved by the Brazilian Electricity Regulatory Agency By 2010 the Brazilian Institute of Environment and Renewable Natural Resources had started the licensing process for five dams on the Tapajos with a total reservoir area of about 2,000 square kilometres 770 square miles. These would all be platform-based plants. According to the Energy Expansion Plan 2010-19 the first plant, São Luas do Tapajos, was to be launched in 2011 and to start operating in 2016. <inaudible> <inaudible> Indigenous peoples opposition In November 2012 tensions mounted when federal police in the region shot dead the Indian Adanilson Munduruku. On 3 April 2013 the Federal Public Ministry asked for the federal government to suspend a military, police operation that was underway in the Tapajos region and to suspend studies and licensing for the São Luas do Tapajos plant. The police and military were protecting a team of 24 researchers in the area, with more due to arrive. The MPF asked that the Munduruku Indians and the directly affected Ribeirinhos communities first be consulted, as required by the International Labour Organization's Indigenous and Tribal Peoples Convention, 1989, to which Brazil subscribed in 2002. The MPF stated that the armed operation violated human rights, prevented any chance of dialogue in good faith and would tend to create confrontation. On 16 April 2013 the Federal Regional Court of the First Region in Brasilia ordered that the government suspend the military and police Operation Tapajos. In the region of the Munduruku Indigenous Territory, studies of the project and its impact halted in June 2013 when Indians opposed to the Tapajos developments took hostage three biologists working for Electrobras. The three researchers were released after two days on 23 June 2013 after the federal government promised that the Electrobras research projects would be suspended and the Indians consulted. On 12 August 2013 the Tapajos Study Group, which is responsible for analyzing the environmental viability of the hydroelectric projects on the river, was authorized by the federal government to resume research on the fauna and flora of the region. Electrobras, which coordinates the study group, confirmed that it planned to submit environmental impact studies to Obama for the São Luas do Tapajos and Jatabá hydroelectric plants in December 2013. Other members of the study group are Electronaut, GDF Suez, CEMIG, Copel, Neoenergia, Electricité de France, Endesa Brazil, and Carmago Correa. On 29 July 2013, the Federal Public Ministry recommended suspension of licensing of the Cachoeira dos Partos hydroelectric plant for the same reasons as other planned hydroelectric plants on the Tapajos, Teles Perez, Jamanxime, and Juruena rivers. They had not undertaken an integrated environmental assessment and had not consulted with the affected indigenous peoples, both legal requirements. The Ministry of the Environment informed the Federal Public Ministry in Santarem on 20 September 2013 that it had suspended licensing. Further delays. In September 2014 the Ministry of Mines and Energy postponed the planned 15 December 2014 auction for the São Luas do Tapajos plant until 2015. The delay was due to the need to adjust the studies to account for the indigenous component. The Ministry still expected the plant to come into operation in 2020. 
In June 2015 it was announced that the auction of the São Luas do Tapajós hydroelectric plant would not be held in 2015 as intended due to licensing problems, but was expected to take place in 2016. On 20 January 2016 it was reported that the deadline for the feasibility study for the Jatabar plant had been extended to December 2016, and the deadline for the Jamanxim plant feasibility study was now 31 December 2017, after long delays, on 19 April 2016 the Fundacao National do Indio National Indian Foundation, FANI, published a study that recognized the traditional nature of the occupation of the Sore Maibu indigenous territory. This action followed the 17 April 2016 vote to impeach President Dilma Rousseff in the Chamber of Deputies. Also on 19 April 2016 the Brazilian Institute of Environment and Renewable Natural Resources Obama suspended environmental licensing for the São Luas do Tapajós Dam. Obama stated that it was a coincidence that both actions occurred on the same day. On 28 July 2016, the MPF recommended that Obama definitively cancel the licensing process for the São Luas do Tapajós plant. Following the FANI study, the plant was unconstitutional since the 1988 constitution expressly prohibits removal of indigenous peoples from their lands. Obama had 10 days to respond. In August 2016 Obama announced official cancellation of the São Luas do Tapajós environmental license. Notes Sources <laughs> 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 <laughs>